Hello and welcome to the Award Force Academy, a place where I will share helpful tips, tricks and best practices. Today's topic is how to attract sponsors to your recognition program. My name is Carl, your host, and I'm very happy to be delivering today's topic. By the end of this presentation, I hope you can walk away with some useful tips and ideas to help you with attracting sponsors to your recognition program. Today we'll be covering why attracting sponsors can boost your program profile, how to promote your program to potential sponsors, and ensuring sponsors get the attention they expect. And all this in roughly 30 minutes. You can ask questions using the chat feature. However, I will address all questions near the end of the presentation. If I'm unable to address all questions, I will get back to you personally. Many of you already rely on sponsorship and you may already know the importance of your sponsors. Sponsorship is a lot more than just a marketing avenue for your sponsors. It's a two-way street. They're helping you and you're helping them. This relationship you build with your sponsors goes way beyond the simple needs of finding funding to support your programs. It helps all stakeholders grow their business, increase brand, product or cause awareness, opens doors to new opportunities and a lot more. If you're an organization who needs to be proactive with procuring sponsorship and need their support, then you might think of your relationship with sponsors as, as partners. You need to show value to your sponsors and you need value from your sponsors. The value your sponsors can provide for your cause can include many things. Here are a few I've listed. For example, they can help with distributing the cost of your program, help influence a program's public perception, help with providing access to a new audience. They may even help by being directly involved with your program, such as judging. Then there's the value you can provide to your sponsors, including things like providing new marketing campaign options, providing industry specific product placement, and providing options to increase their chances of user engagement with their services or products. And I'm sure there's a lot more. Okay, so how do we go about getting those sponsors? What do we need to consider? Well, we have a guide, a pipeline for you to help with this process of procuring those sponsors. We'll make this guide available for you to download at the end of the, uh, at the same time that this webinar becomes available for on-demand viewing. So keep an eye out for that. The guide includes strategizing, knowing who your sponsors should be, getting in touch with potential sponsors, having a great proposal, delivering the proposal, and closing the deal. You probably already have your own sponsorship procurement guides in place. However, you're more than welcome to take a look through our guide if you like. Each section in our guide covers strategy. This section covers a series of steps and questions designed to help you formulate a plan to help you increase your chances of successful sponsorship procurement. Now, who your sponsors should be. This section lists some helpful points and advice on how to prepare yourself for approaching your potential sponsors. Getting in touch with potential sponsors. This section includes some really good tips on how to approach your sponsors, including looking at your approach from their perspective and building good relationships. Having a great proposal. This section contains some great ideas about putting your proposal together, including things like starting the proposal with a story describing your demographics, discussing your marketing strategies, and even seeking advice. Delivering the proposal. This section discusses the importance of being approachable, personable, and meeting with the right people. And closing the deal. This section covers strategies on how to close the deal, including successful and unsuccessful results. Okay. Shortly, I'll be demonstrating various locations and technologies you can use in your Award Force platform to help promote and provide exposure for your sponsors. But first, I'd like to suggest some ideas which may help you think about how you can provide various levels of value for your sponsors. For example, you might have access and opportunity to include your sponsors in media, such as your own website, mailing lists, print media, social media campaigns, radio advertisements, and more. However, I want to suggest potential placements and some tips and tricks for sponsor packages 
you uh, specific to your AwardForce platform. For example, you might want to offer several package options. Let's call these a platinum package, a gold package, silver package, and so on. Each package could be designed to offer different levels of value, but you need to know what you can do in your platform before you can design those packages. For example, a platinum sponsor package could include something like naming rights to your program, a featured logo in all header images, a featured logo on awards, certificates or trophies presented to winners, guaranteed visibility of their logo in the footer and in full color plus larger logo compared to other sponsorship packages, featured in a sponsorship page with hot links to their services, a dedicated one-time use per user discount code for paid entries when entrants engage with their services, special mentions in social media marketing campaigns about the program, a strong theme presence, meaning the award force platform is themed based on the colors of the sponsoring organization, an embedded video featured on the registration page, a dedicated checkbox field presented during registration, asking users if they would like to receive special offers from the sponsor, that is to be added to a mailing list. A gold sponsorship package could offer something with high value too, but not quite as high as the platinum package. For example, it could include things like naming rights of a specific category, logo visibility within the entry form based on category, guaranteed visibility of their logo in the footer and in full color plus larger logo compared to lower valued sponsorship packages, a dedicated automated email notification featuring the sponsor when entrants submit their entries into a sponsored category, featured in a sponsorship package page, sorry, with hot links to their services and a dedicated one-time use per user discount code for paid entries when entrants engage with their services. These are just a couple of examples. However, what I'm demonstrating here are options you have, perhaps options you might not realize you have. Okay, so I'm going to jump over to the platform and we'll take a look at how you could utilize your platform and provide value to your sponsors. Let's just jump into our program here. All right, so first of all, I'm featuring the registration page. On the registration page, we have at the very top what we call a header logo. In my example, I'm demonstrating a composition where I'm including what could be a, say, a platinum sponsor and my program logo. At the very bottom, we have a footer graphic. Again, the composition that I've put together here is demonstrating what could be in my scenario, a platinum sponsorship, gold sponsorship, and there may be lower level packages. On the registration page, there are still more options yet again. We have an area over here where I'm using um, a markdown language to pull in and feature more logos. In this case, I've got a, an example of a logo called Mono and Pick Me Up. And I'm also demonstrating, pulling in and demonstrating a video. Further on from that, if a new user was to register, we have the potential, I suppose, to have two steps in, of, in the registration. This first page is what we call as step one. Now let me create a new profile here, and I'll just demonstrate that. I'll plus that. Okay, yes, I've read and agree to those and agree to that and I'm going to register. Okay, so we're about to jump over to step two of registration. And here it is on my screen now. So as we can see, I'm able to ask additional questions during step two of registration. <clears throat> In this case, it also allows me the opportunity to mention my major sponsor again. <clears throat> um, maybe feature their logo again and again I'm pulling in a video to demonstrate which could be directly from the sponsor. There's other options I can do like pull in uh, or ask users if they'd like to be part of a, a mailing list from the uh, major sponsor. And right, I'll just complete this so yes I want the, to receive the special offers and yes I want that newsletter and I'm going to complete that profile. All right, this then lands the user um, on their home page. Now I'm gonna just log out of this user profile and log in as another because I have a few things set up that I'd like to demonstrate to you. 
So bear with me just for a quick moment. Jump out of there. And I'm gonna log in with this profile. Now what I'm featuring here is the view from an entrance point of view. I'm gonna start off by going to my entries, which is the home page for an entrant. Like, I was, like we saw just a moment ago when I registered with a new user. At the very top, we have an area where we can display um, a header image and also a background image. At the very bottom, we have that footer graphic that will persist through the entire program at all times. And other things that we can do when we go into a user's prof um, entry, um, we have more opportunities in here to really expose um, some of our sponsors. What I'm demonstrating here is a content block at the very top where I'm using Markdown to, to pull in and feature um, a logo from a sponsor, potentially a special offer or an exclusive offer, um, and, and give instructions to entrants on how to engage with the, with the sponsor. A bit further down in the entry form, I'm demonstrating a particular category. Here is the naming convention or, or a naming rights of a category. I'm featuring the sponsor logo as part of this. And also in the category description area, I'm also including special messages from this category sponsor, um, which includes not only their logo, but also a video in this example. Now, if your program happens to be using our chapter functionality, well, you can have sponsors for those as well. So as an example, if I jump over to Asia, you can see that we can have a sponsor graphic used within this um, area as well. All right, I'm just going to jump back to Europe for a moment. Now, another thing that we can also do, which again provides even more exposure for your uh, category sponsors, is to provide um, placement within the entry form in key locations. Here I'm demonstrating the use of a content field. I'm pulling in uh, a logo and presenting some nice information, a teaser if you like, to try and get the users to really engage with the sponsor. Something else that you can also consider um, when an entrant submits their entry, however it is that they procure the, the, the um, say a discount code. In, in this case, I'm demonstrating paid submissions. I've submitted an entry into my card as an entrant in a particular category, which is employee of the year in this case. Assuming I have somehow got a, a discount code, I can now put my code in here, pick me up and apply it. And that will take it down from $80 to $60, which happens to be, in this case, a discount code I've created at 25% off. Excellent. At the very top of the cart, there's another content block area that you could utilize. In this case, what I'm demonstrating is not logos per se, um, but just a nice little um, message in here for the user to go in and just make sure that they're not missing out on any uh, discounts that, that could be available to them in this scenario. Okay, uh, other things that we can take a look at, we have an about page here. So I've created an about page just for my sponsors, something that you can do within your programs as well. About pages are visible to all users, so your entrants, judges, yourselves, absolutely everyone who has registered access to your programs. In this particular case, I'm featuring platinum sponsors and gold sponsors and other major sponsors all here within the same page. And I've brought this together by using standard system functionality as well as the markdown formatting language to pull in things like logos and make links and, and various things. Other things that we can do in gallery type views, here I'm featuring a voting page which is laid out like a gallery. Again, we have um, our theme assets at the top. We have a content block available where I'm able to utilize that space once again and feature uh, category logos um, and maybe special announcements, whatever that might be. And a bit further down, I'm able to use our badge feature that comes with the program and pull in and show a graphic, um, in this case, who the sponsor, category sponsor is. All right, and that really allows me to associate that category or that sponsor with the category and these entries that are in that particular category. Okay, nice. So there you go, a few ideas for you to think about and consider. 
the value of all those different locations is up to you. But as you can see, there are some key places that you can, that you, that you can really help with providing that exposure uh, your sponsors are looking for. Let's consider the technologies I used in my demonstration just now. On the registration page, I feature the header image, footer image, and a content block. The header image is added to your platform via the theming functionality. In my example, I'm cr I created a composition in, uh, including my platinum sponsor and my program logo. The footer image is also added to your platform via the theming functionality. The footer area allows you to include what we call a logo image and a background image. Typically, the logo image hovers over the background image. My example is only featuring a logo image in the footer area. When adding a logo to the footer, all the sponsors you want featured in this space need to be in one single composition. However, you can make the footer clickable and direct users to your website where you might be featuring all your sponsors with descriptions and hot links going off to their services. In this area, I'm highlighting is a content block. It's a great place to include special mentions and messages from one or two of your sponsors. In my example, I'm using Markdown, a type of formatting language to pull in and feature sponsor logos and a video. Okay, after the first step of registration, you have options for a second registration step. Here, I'm featuring the use of what we call content fields to continue the exposure of one of my primary sponsors. In these content fields, I'm again using the Markdown formatting language to pull in and feature sponsors, logos, and a video. This field I'm highlighting isn't showcasing a logo, video, or graphic of any kind. However, I am using it to build a mailing list, a list I can pass on to my primary sponsor so they can reach my audience and offer them their services and products. If you include something like this, ensure your description of its purpose is clear with your audience. Once a user has registered or logged in, they land on their homepage. This entrance home, uh, this Entrance and judges homepage is very similar in appearance and feature the same theme elements. This highlighted area is the entrance homepage logo. It's included via the theming functionality, just like the logo on the registration page, but is managed separately. The header logo area also has a background image, something you or your graphic designer could utilize when considering sponsor placement. However, in my example, I'm limiting my sponsor exposure to only include the primary sponsor with my header logo. The footer image highlighted here is the same image we saw on the registration page and as such is managed by the platform's theming functionality and includes the same settings and link if included. Okay, so here's the inside of an entry form from an entrance perspective after they have selected a category. At the very top is an option for you, to, for you to include a content block, a content block that is always visible to the entrant when they're completing their entry forms. It's an excellent location to offer important tips, support ch channel information, and maybe feature a sponsor. I'm again using Markdown to show a sponsor logo and a hyperlink in this example. Each category you create has an option to include a category description, a fantastic location to tell entrants, applicants, and nominators all about the category they have selected. And again, you can use Markdown to feature sponsor logos and video, creating even more exposure and opportunities for people to engage with your sponsors. Also part of categories is an option for you to, for you to include one or more images images that appear to the entrant when they select the category in their entry form. These images or sponsor logos are uploaded directly to the category when you're setting them up. And here we have another example of continuing the exposure of a sponsor within a tab in the entry form. In this example, I'm using a content field and markdown to pull in and showcase a sponsor using these technologies allows me to target my messages to specific users in their entry form 
and based on the category they're entering into. Another option you have on to enter and submit their entry is to land them on a completion page. This completion page is managed via content block, another key location in the journey your entrants go through where you can feature one or more of your sponsors. In this example, I am again using Markdown to feature my primary sponsor and increase the chance for user engagement with the sponsor. Moving on from the completion page, when an entrant submits their entry, depending on how you have configured your program, the entrant would receive an email notification confirming their entry has been successfully submitted. By default, the same email notification is sent to all entrants who submit an entry. However, you can make these notifications category specific, which can give you yet another opportunity to feature specific sponsors based on the action the entrant has taken and the category they have entered into. The header and photographic, if used, is a global constant and is managed via the platform's theming feature. Whereas the body of the email notification can be constant, meaning it applies to all, or specific based on the category. In this case, I'm using the markdown formatting language to again pull in and feature a sponsor logo within the body of the email, including links. Moving on and back into the platform, here I'm featuring an about page content block. About page content blocks are an excellent way to ensure all users in your pr program have the option to access and engage with your sponsors. Again, you would need to use the markdown formatting language to build a page, like in my example here, and it's a great way to allow people to stay in your platform while also having this level of exposure for your sponsors. Okay, so just about all of you use various modes of judging in your platforms, and many of you have galleries and voting pages. These galleries and voting pages could be open to the general public, or you might only allow registered users access. Either way, this is another excellent opportunity to continue that sponsorship exposure. Here in my example, I created a dedicated voting round for a sponsored category, allowing me to really optimize the sponsor association with that category and those entries. Firstly, this approach allows me to use a content block associated with this round of voting. Again, I have utilized the markdown formatting language to feature a sponsor logo in this space. Next, I use the badge feature in my platform. As you can see in my example, this has provided me with even more and yet subtle exposure of the category sponsor. Then when a user goes into an entry, I've again used the content field and the markdown formatting language to pull in and feature the sponsor. In this scenario, I know people are viewing these entries to vote and this allows me to provide even more promotional opportunities for my sponsor. If you would like to learn more about how you can add sponsor images and video into your program, look through these articles in your help center. And if you need to, contact us via support at awardforce.com. If you are currently trying to write these article names down right now, don't worry too much. We'll let you know when this webinar is available for on-demand viewing, where you can access this list, or you can just ask our amazing client success team via support at awardforce.com. All right, we're almost done, but just before we finish up, here are some great tips and ideas for when you consider, or for you, when considering sponsors and sponsorship placement. Reward user engagement. Think of how you can provide benefit or a reward to your entrants when users, sorry, to your entrants or users when they engage with your sponsors. Perhaps depending on the sponsorship package, you could offer a discount, whoops, sorry, I'm <laughs> getting ahead of myself here. A discount for entrance when they're paying for their entry or a discount for entrance when they engage with your sponsors. For example, perhaps the entrants need to consider or contact, I should say, the sponsor where the sponsor has the discount code and depending on the conversion, the sponsor could provide the discount code or uh, to the entrant, usable within your platform when they submit and pay for their entries. 
for implementing something like this, make sure it's technically possible to achieve in your platform. Not all payment configurations would allow for this, so you're welcome to contact us if you're not sure. Or you can provide a code to users to the users so that they can use with the sponsor. This could be an agreement between you and your sponsor, which provides, for example, a five or maybe a 10% discount when your users engage with the sponsor and recite the code. Sponsor placement. Consider where and how sponsors will be featured in your platform. As I just covered, there are plenty of opportunities. However, you might consider some of those key locations more valuable than others. My advice would be to create a list of all the different locations you're going to feature in your platform. Then you can make a note of which sponsors you're featuring based on location in your list. This will help you manage and update your platform as and when you need. Also, if you have a lot of sponsors, ensure your compositions are well designed to ensure your sponsors can be individually identified. Here, I'm going to show you a great example from Azure Publishing in their platform, the AZ Awards for Design Excellence. All right, so here we are on the registration page for the AZ Awards. What I'm going to feature specifically is their composition in the footer. It's a great example of how they have, well, from my, from my point of view, it's a clear hierarchy of, of um, logo placement. So we have a few at the top that are really visible. We have uh, another level just underneath that that uh, seem to be a bit larger um, and still quite distinguishable. And we have more down the bottom that appear to be a bit smaller, but still quite distinguishable. So in my opinion, this is a really well-designed footer composition. Okay, balancing user experience. Now, Award Force has been designed as a full end-to-end -end solution for managing award and other recognition type programs. It's not designed to be a marketing platform, therefore give strong consideration regarding users' experience when participating in your program. It's great to have sponsors and feature them in key locations, but not at the cost of creating a poor or negative user experience. So be very careful with balancing out sponsor exposure and a good user experience and make a noise for your sponsors. Where you can, make special mentions of your sponsors. They'll be happy to see special mentions in your social media posts, blog posts, and other channels like your mailing lists. A nice little cherry is to include your sponsors in a thank you email broadcast or social media post. Here's another great example from the Winnovation Awards, where they have used an EDM tool to announce their winners and mention their sponsors. So this is an example of an email that they sent after they had completed their program, specifically to mention their category winners. What I really like about this is that with each category that they've mentioned, they are mentioning who the sponsors are for those particular categories. So again, it's a really good way to provide another level of exposure, allowing people to be interested, of course, in the category, the winners of those categories, and special mentions regarding the, the category sponsors. Alrighty, and now this brings us to the end of today's presentation. But just before we end, let me see if anyone does have questions at this particular time. So I'm just checking over here off screen. All right, now there was a question um, regarding what is Markdown. Um, and as, as I did mention before, we do have some um, articles in our uh, help center that can help explain what Markdown is. However, I will just quickly show you, if I jump over to Award Force for a moment, I'm gonna log out and I'll quickly log in under my own details where I'll have access to our support articles like you do. Alrighty, so jumping in. So for all of you who have program manager access to um, your platform, over on the right hand side, there's this little need a hand tab that sticks out. All right, this is going to give you access to lots of different articles. In this case, I'm going to specifically search for Markdown. All right, and here's an article I'm gonna click on. 
And this is an article that you can use or refer to to learn a little bit more about Markdown. Um, Markdown is, as it's showing in these articles, it's a little bit kind of codey, but it's extremely safe, um, meaning that it doesn't matter what you do with it, it's not going to cause any damage or anything like that to, to your data. Um, but if you do have a little bit of um, trouble with it, just, just get in touch with us via support at awardforce.com and we'll be happy to steer you in the right direction. Okay, um, bear with me just for a moment. Looking for more. Oop. Okay. All right, we've got a really good question here from, um, from Renee. I'm asking if all of these sponsor possibilities are open to all customers or a certain level of award force customers. Now that's a really, really good question. I am featuring um, the sponsors based on a professional plan that you have. However, the use of Markdown is available for people who might be on a starter or a plus plan as well. Um, but to take full advantage of the theme, of course, you'll need to be on the professional plan. All right, I have another question here. Um, how is the best way to share data with sponsors without having them in the platform as, say, program managers? Okay, so that's, again, a really good question. I would strongly advise that you don't give um, anyone except yourselves full program manager access to the system. So when, when you are in your own program, uh, you'll have access to, to data. So, for example, if you come into the manage entry section of your awards program, uh, you'll be able to take advantage of various export options. Now this export, depending on how you design your entry forms or your registration forms, you can collect certain information. When you export all this information to a spreadsheet, you'd be able to go through and filter that information by key information and create some type of metric and share that with your sponsors. Um, there's probably other things that you could consider as well. Um, for example, when we come into the settings area of the system, there's opportunities for you to include a Google Analytics tracking ID. So this will help you um, from your own Google Analytics account uh, demonstrate key parts, if you like. So you can really say, okay, we have a lot of people that see the registration page, or we have a lot of people that you know, might go to an about page um, and, and you can demonstrate um, sort of visit uh, information based on, on those um, paths. Other things that you can do as well is we have an option, not here, I don't have an example in my account here, but you do have an option to add some um, tracking code into the system. However, uh, the, the system also allows users to choose how they want to be be tracked so even though you might have tracking code added to your program and if you did want that you need to contact us and um, provide that tracking code to us to implement uh, users still have an option to say well yes or no I, I want to be tracked or I don't want to be tracked okay um, let me see if we have any other questions okay looks like Looks like that's it for the moment. Um, unless there's any other questions, I think we might be done for today. So uh, if you do have any further questions, um, let me just clear my screen here for a moment. As I'm showing on my screen at the, here, if you do have any further questions, uh, you're more than welcome to send them through to support at awardforce.com, where either myself or anyone in our client success team will be able to give you some advice and tips. Alrighty. Okay, well, I'd like to sincerely thank you all for watching today. I hope you've been able to get some great ideas, tips, and some insight from today's webinar on how to attract sponsors to your recognition program. So thank you, and we'll see you next time.